I was gonna open up this video with a joke about waterfalls, but decided not to. It was just gonna be a poor joke. In the wake of an ecological disaster, human society has fallen to pieces. Giant mutated beavers have now taken their place. Will their hard-working spirit, architectural intelligence, and giant buck teeth allow them to survive where the humans failed? Well, find out in Timberborn! I swear, these games always have way more backstory than is necessary for a city builder. This game has had me on the fact that it is revolving around beavers and it gives you the tools to be able to terraform your map, try and hoard natural resources and cultivate new natural resources to be able to be successful. Ah, fresh new map. I'm so excited to begin exploring, terraforming, and prospering here in our new beaver colony. Few moments later. And they're dead. First drought and everybody's dead. Okay, for real this time, I'm not about to let a game featuring cute little beavers beat me up. So here at the very beginning, we have to see to our beavers hierarchy of needs. They need food, water, and they need logs. Then we just have to lay down the zone that we want the trees cut in. There's a nice pine forest here that'll be able to give us plenty of resources to begin building our settlement here. Okay, now that things are built up, we wanna begin Adding in our storage features, so the log pile is unique for lumber, and then the small warehouse is going to be able to take care of everything else. Get that going over here. Now one of the really cool features about this game is that some buildings have this solid tag. That means they have a nice strong flat roof that you'll be able to build on top of, so you can add a lot of verticality into your settlements. But I am realizing, to be able to take advantage of that, uh, we're gonna have to use stairs, and right now our beavers don't understand how to build stairs. We have to spend science points to be able to unlock those, so we're gonna get an inventor going, see if he can figure out how we can possibly get up to the roofs of these buildings that we've constructed. And then, just to be better safe than sorry, I think I want to add a second water pump here. Make sure that we have enough stored up for the drought times. And now a final piece that I think is going to be essential for our survival is getting a dam going here. I don't know if we'll be able to get one in place before the first drought, but that could really save us. Okay, we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna get a, um, where are you? Another lumberjack to be able to chop down this adjacent forest. Um, I also want him right close to the stairs. So yeah, we'll just, we'll just do this. And then for starters here, I want to be able to zone just this pine forest. Even though within his range is going to be all of this dead forest. For starters, we would just want to take this down so that we can get to uh, building this dam. You guys are going to have to make all of the dam puns down in the comments because right now the YouTube algorithm likes me for labeling my content as profanity free and I wanted to stay that way. Okay, so the advantage of building uh, this dam right here is going to be that it will back the water up at least a little bit. The water level, you have these different like, I mean if I turn and face the cliffs, you can see they have different tiers of how, how high they go. But then the water level also has half tiers within that. So if we can block off the flow over here, we'll be able to hold at least a little bit of water through part of the drought. And as long as we're able to do that, then we're able to keep these berry bushes like watered and growing and then another thing here that we're going to want to get going actually i probably probably should have gotten this going sooner is that we want to get down a farmhouse yes a farmhouse and some fields if we can get a a crop of food coming in here that is going to help us a lot for being able to survive so we have three different kinds of crops we can plant carrots potatoes and wheat um, this right now is an early access build, so that's what we have right now. And the potatoes and the wheat both require refinement before they become an edible food stuff, but the carrots can just be eaten, um, immediately. Let's see, what is more important, building the dam or building the farmhouse? Uh, I think building the dam is actually more important because if we just build the farmhouse, they're not really able to do anything. The crops will uh, just wither away and die in the drought if we don't have the dam up. So we're going to do this. And I love this. If you build the path on top of your structures, you get little, little guardrails because, you know, the beavers are concerned about safety. 
OSHA will have no complaints about this. So yeah, we're actually gonna mark this as low priority. You have five different priority markers here. And like I was saying about refining the foodstuffs, if we go over here, you see we have uh, the grill that we can build to be able to grill potatoes. Um, it actually is a nice efficiency multiplier as well for the potatoes because just one unit of potatoes from the fields becomes four units of food, which is really nice. The carrots are just gonna be one to one. And then we have the grist mill, which requires power. There's a lot of just ramping up that you can do in this game to grind wheat down into flour and then a bakery turning flour into bread. And then here at the very end, we have the beehive, which is a unique building that will allow our crops to actually grow faster for us. It's gonna be pretty interesting to get to play around with. Our beavers might not be able to grasp the concept of stairs, but they are incredible meteorologists. They are always guaranteed to predict the weather correctly. So we see up here, we're gonna have the first drought in one and a half days. Will the dam be completed in time? Oh, it's, it's guaranteed, it's going up. We just have to finish the build progress tomorrow. So right now the beavers are taking a break. They do sleep during the night. If you look at their hierarchy of needs, um, they do have sleep here on a track, and so you can change how long their working hours are, but they need time to uh, fill their other needs to keep their well-being high. So right now I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, if we flop again <laughs> and fail, then I think I'm going to kick it up and make them work the overtime just until we get our settlement really set up and underway. But there it is. The dam is complete, and you can kind of see the difference, can you? that the water level is higher on the other side. Right now it's probably not that noticeable, but it is helping us out. It is helping us out, I promise. It'll be more noticeable when the drought actually hits and then the rest of the riverbed goes dry, but we were able to keep this and keep on growing our, um, our farm stock. Okay, we don't need all these lumberjacks. We wanna start managing our workers. We're keeping the one over here. We're keeping one over here. That gives us two workers in the farmhouse. Yes, yes, good, good. Start working on housing. Housing is a good drought project, I feel like. There's, I feel like it's a good drought project. So our population will just grow naturally, um, but we will only have children if there is additional housing space available. There we go, we've maxed out. I'm worried about our water supply a little bit. We've maxed out our three small tanks. These tanks honestly don't hold a lot, but we have 90 water here and then an additional 30 housed in the water pumps. The drought has hit, so here it is. The drought is here. This area of the riverbed's gone dry. There's no more water coming in. This area has all flown away into this final reservoir. I'm not sure how slowly that's going to drain off because it's at the edge of the map. It's kind of just where it flows off anyway. But the area that we blocked up is able to hold a nice reserve of water for us. Uh, so it's actually going to be important. I'm interested in breaking down these barriers to be able to divert a flow along this side. Um, but we're only going to want to do that when we're able to also put a dam over there to still hold this portion of the river in check to be able to water the crops, get that growth stat going on those, and also be able to keep on bringing in food. Oh man, one of our workers died of old age. That kind of puts us in a pinch. What are we short on? It looks like we're okay though. And now we have full population coverage. Hopefully we get a few children and start to replenish the population. Honestly, having a small population right now is fine. Being able to have fewer mouths to feed early on. While the drought drones on, we have another three days to survive of this, which ugh, it's kind of rough, but let's take a look at the full map. So you have these areas of uh, ruins from the previous human civilization. That is your source of scrap metal for some of your more advanced buildings. and so. There's all these ruins. There was one that I showed off over here. And there's like an enormous one up here at the very top of the plateau. So no shortage of um, scrap metal for us to be able to pick up, but uh, definitely far away from where we are right now. And we should also consider renaming our district. Yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys have naming suggestions because the way the game is set up, 
we can build multiple districts. So uh, if I click on here, you see these green lines along all the paths we build. That's because it is a quick trip for the beavers to be able to get anywhere along this path network. But as we extend farther and farther out, you see it goes to yellow and then it will eventually um, go to red and you will ultimately hit an absolute limit on the influence zone of your district. And so you need to build additional districts farther out if you want to be able to utilize the entire map um, and be able to keep on gathering these resources. I am playing on hard here, so the droughts are going to continue to get longer and more severe. So I think the idea is that you will ultimately die off. You will There will be an eternal drought at some point that you are not able to survive, but you want to see how long you are able to survive. And so that is kind of our challenge if we were able to manage and stockpile enough resources to keep on surviving here. Um, I have a couple ideas. I'm going to talk about them a little bit later when we have access to more technologies. But that's kind of the key is that a lot of these, any of these with the red lock symbol, yeah, we can't access right now. They're gated by science points. So we're going to build another inventor, even though we don't necessarily have the population to actually put somebody in there. But to start getting research points a little bit faster here, I think is going to be pretty beneficial. And with 100 banked up, we can start looking at what we want to get first. Um, stairs and this initial platform are very beneficial, kind of as foundational pieces of your city. But even more so is going to be this forester. So this is where we can replant um, the forests that we chopped down. So we definitely need this. <laughs> and we're going to put it down over here. Get the path going to it. And then we're going to set down a zone. You have multiple different types of things you can plant. So the forester will plant berries to be able to um, assist with the gatherer and have that as a food source. I would rather rely on these crops. And here we're getting our first harvest of carrots, which is wonderful to see. We're actually at, we were at zero food. That was cutting it kind of close, but I don't think any of our, any of our um, population ended up on like starvation, the edge of starvation. Then we have birch, pine, and maple. And as we see here, they have different growing times and also different returns in terms of logs. So the birch is only good for one log, takes nine days to grow. Pine, two logs, 12 days to grow, so way more efficient. And then the maple, eight logs at 24 days to grow. So it's going to be a while until we get returns on these guys. But when we do, it'll be way better than the other types of trees. So that's what we're gonna go for here. Make sure that we have it set up to cover this entire area. There we go. And I kinda want the rest of this area to be farmland, I think. Oh, we also want to prioritize. This is a fun little trick. You can have them set on prioritizing planting or harvesting. And I would prefer them to prioritize planting because then as they are going through the harvest, um, these other areas are able to start growing rather than harvesting the whole thing in a wave, planting it, you, you waste time, you waste time. The drought has ended, the river is back to flowing and we never fully depleted this zone, which is really nice to see. We have finally gotten a few more children to begin replenishing the population. And I think it is time to figure out stairs so I can stop harping on the fact that we did not initially know how to make stairs. I think this large water tank might be next because it's just going to be so much more efficient. I mean, look at this. Small water tank, capacity 30. Large water tank, capacity 300. So it will require, ooh, it will require some new resources to be able to construct. Maybe it is farther out than uh, we realize. We need to have planks and gears, which are refined forms of logs, to be able to build those. So. We're gonna have to work on that first, I suppose. Ooh, I did not realize the Forester also requires planks. Okay, put a pause on it. We gotta figure this out. We're gonna need the lumber mill going down and the lumber mill requires power as a little electricity electro boat there. So that means we're gonna have to start creating power as a well. So you have, before we do any unlocks, we have two options. We have the water wheel, which we can put down here with flowing water be able to generate power. And then we have the power wheel, which is just, it's a hamster wheel that you put a beaver in. That'll give you 50 horsepower. But that is enough to actually, I think, 
50 horsepower? Yeah, 50 horsepower it will exactly power a lumber mill. Um, I prefer right now keeping our population small. We're gonna go water wheel. And hope we don't regret it, basically. <laughs> um, all the way back here could be fun. Yeah, let's like build, let's build our initial industry in this corner. Hey, and it's turning. Now, unfortunately, it droughts right around the corner, which is going to cut off our supply of power, but it's only going to be a setback of a few days. Uh, and we have to get the lumber mill up and then this uh, drive chain over to be able to power it. I kind of built it in this way because I'm anticipating adding a second water wheel right down here, and then I can run its powertrain to connect in here. And if I build multiple industry buildings right next to each other, like here, because it, it highlights in a slightly different way and it says shares power with adjacent buildings. So I can build kind of a block of industry in this corner supplied by the two water wheels with about 400 horsepower output as long as they are uh, able to consistently keep turning here. So basically if it's not a drought. Now, as droughts get longer and longer, we're gonna have to find ulterior sources of power, which our faction here we can get the windmills that, as long as the wind is blowing, we'll be able to provide significant amounts of power. Thankfully, our food source has really been secured and looks like we are doing great in terms of food. And it looks like a nice, even balance of being able to clear the amount of um, space with just the two farmers. We've added a row of potatoes here and a grill to be able to start supplementing our diet right now. Hey, our first plank! It happened! We got one and I missed it! There we do. Uh, Kadunas has started making logs into planks. And then these planks can go straight over here to be able to start our forester. We will then reforest the area so that we can keep on getting more logs. It is a beautiful, beautiful cycle. Ooh, this drought is going to be six days long. Alright. All right, drought conditions have forced us into using the hamster wheel to keep our plank production going. We'll just have to remember to turn it off when we have the water wheel working for us. All right, the drought has ended. The influx of water will soon begin spilling over the dam. Turn the water wheel, turn. Hey, there it goes. That means we can shut off the power wheel. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. This will be able to give us plenty of planks. And here it is. The Forester is in place. Time to solidify. Where was it? Where was it? Plant trees, maples, and all these spaces that had had uh, pine saplings. We want to fill in. And this tiny zone as well. There we go. And he has hard at work. Johnny Appleseed of the Beavers being able to reforest the area, going to secure a reliable source of building materials for us in uh, 24 days. <laughs> uh, it's so long to wait, man. It's going to be, it's gonna be rough. We need to get through to chop down these forests as well because we don't have much remaining over here to be able to supply us with any other building supplies but that's gonna wait for another episode thank you guys for watching hopefully you are enjoying this give me any ideas of things that you want to potentially see but remember this is on the hard difficulty so we're going to be in a crunch to make sure that we survive the later and longer droughts subscribe if you want to see more videos from me and stay tuned for more timberborn